Ableton Live 12 introduces a lot of new features and there are some that have been somewhat overlooked and in amongst all of these overlooked new features and additions is one that I think is really useful for people who like to build their own presets and racks and that is the update to Ableton Live 12's Shaper device. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Shaper and how it works, this is a device that has been included in various different ways in previous editions of Ableton Live. And let's just go through really quickly how it works. On the surface, it's actually really simple. We have this interface here that allows us to draw in any kind of curve that we want. And then this curve can be mapped to control parameters on other devices, either over time in a loop, and we can do things like re-trigger the starting position, change the phase offset and all these other things. And this is a really useful device for adding movement to sounds. So for instance, here I've got a break. And let's go ahead and add an auto filter to this break. And I can use the shaper here to control the filter frequency of this auto filter on a kind of consistent LFO basis. Let's do this by just clicking on the map button and mapping this to the filter frequency control. And then we can say, slow down the rate of the shaper a little bit and change this curve, maybe turn off snapping so we can adjust this freely. And now our filter frequency control is moving in correspondence to this curve on our shaper. We can do things like adjust the depth and even change the modulation amount. And in Live 12, this Shaper device is actually controlling the frequency through modulation rather than remote control, which is what it was doing in previous versions. And this is also a really fantastic update that uh, I like a lot. Now that's all well and good, but the addition to Shaper in Live 12 that makes it fantastic for people who like to design their own presets and make their own racks is the new manual mode, which allows us to manually scrub through the shape that we set and assign to the movement of any parameter. Let me show you how it works. So you'll see if we take a look at the shaper, down the bottom right, we have three different modes in Live 12. There's the loop mode, which functions exactly how I was just showing you then. There's the one shot mode, which allows us to trigger the movement of the shape of the shaper by just clicking this T button right here, and that will trigger it as a one shot. This little button can also be automated, by the way, if we were to switch to arrangement view, turn off the back to arrangement, right click, we can show the automation here, and we can just trigger this wherever we want in the arrangement. Let's undo that and have a look at the manual mode. So you'll see when I switch to manual mode that that rate control there switches to a manual control. And as I start to move this up and down, you'll see a blue line begin to move across the shaper shape and allow us to scrub through this shape manually. So just keeping with this auto filter here, let's go back and bring this break over into our arrangement view. And let's automate this manual control here to just increase linearly from bottom to top over the duration of this break. And you'll see that even though the movement of this manual shaper control here is linear from top bottom to top, the movement of the auto filter is going to follow the movement of the shaper pattern. So already you're probably thinking of a few different ways that this can be useful. Let me just show you a really basic example of how you might use this. Let's go ahead and reset our shape of shape. I'm gonna turn on snapping and I'm gonna select this second from the left shape. Just to keep things simple, let's switch the control mode here to remote. And now what's really cool is this linear movement of our manual control in the automation is now mapped to an exponential movement of the filter. Let's also increase the depth control so we get the full movement. And now, of course, we can map this shape to multiple parameters as well. So let's also map this to, say, the resonance. I can open up this other mapping, click on map, and map this to the resonance control of that same filter. Let's turn this to remote mode as well. And let's change the minimum and maximum values so that the resonance starts quite high, maybe at about 50%, and comes all the way down to kind of let's set this to 6% here. And so now we're controlling the frequency and the resonance using this kind of exponential curve with just a single linear automation.
Let's also adjust the base value for the frequency so that it doesn't start all the way low. Now, of course, this is a really simple application of this feature. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated one. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd love to invite you to leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new, and if you're really enjoying my content, why not consider supporting me by heading on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can support me by buying me a coffee, getting some cool things from my shop, or becoming a member to support me on a monthly basis and get some really awesome things in the process all the way up through to monthly one-on-one -on -one mentorship sessions. You'll find a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page down below. Let's delete this shaper and this auto filter. And let's go ahead and add a delay. Next, what I'm gonna do is group this delay to an audio effect rack by just selecting it and pressing Command and G. And now I'm gonna open up the macro controls and we're just gonna show one single macro here. Next, I'll add a shaper device. Let's put this after the delay. And now let's switch the shaper to manual mode and we're gonna map this manual control here to macro one by right clicking and mapping it to macro one. And so now we have a macro that controls the manual position of this shaper. Now is where it gets pretty cool. Instead of having this shaper just be a simple shape, let's have it so that it basically just adjusts the dry wet position of this delay control to turn it on or off at certain points through time. For instance, let's go ahead and have it off here for this first segment. Let's turn it on for this second segment, off for the third segment, and then on for this fourth segment. And then let's map this shaper to control the dry wet of the delay. And let's once again, turn it from mod here to remote so that we go all the way from 0% to 100%. And so now if I automate this manual control by right clicking, showing the automation, and let's just create a linear automation here, we'll automate through having this delay be off, on, off, and on. maybe turn down this maximum amount a little bit so that we don't go fully wet with this delay. And then let's go ahead and add a reverb. Let's close up this delay and this shaper. And now we'll do the same thing with this reverb by just adding a shaper after the reverb, mapping the shaper to control the dry wet of this reverb, turning it off mod, setting it to manual mode. And let's map this manual control here to that same macro. And now let's have it so that in this first block, the reverb is turned off. In the second block, the reverb is turned off. And then in the third block, the reverb is on. And in this last block, the reverb is on as well. So now as we scrub through this manual mode, we have this first block where neither the delay or the reverb are on. The second block where the reverb is off and the delay is on. The third block where the reverb is on and the delay is off. And then this fourth block where both the reverb and the delay are on. Let's set the maximum value here for this reverb shaper down a little bit again, increase the decay of the reverb and take a listen to the result. Now, obviously this is again, a fairly simple application of this technique, but you can see how you could start to stack multiple shapers and different devices and have all of these different shapers control these different devices on or off values or dry wet values, different parameters in different ways, not linearly, map the manual control of them all to the same macro and then get really dynamic audio effects with just a single knob control. In my mind, this opens up some really wild possibilities for creating your own racks, and I can't wait to actually go ahead and make some racks using this technique. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you all in the next video.